Okay, so coming uh, to the last uh, talk of this uh, in, in, of this instruction course, this is about uh, therapeutic keratoplasty. Well, uh, like all my uh, previous speakers have, and in, uh, beautifully about the various uh, nuances of an optical penetrating keratoplasty, this is therapeutic keratoplasty, quite a different scenario as compared to an optical uh, keratoplasty. So I need to possibly touch upon the various points related to a uh, keratoplasty because he, there are some things which are similar, while some things are way, way different from an optical keratoplasty. Now, uh, before I uh, go into it, there is one thing which I would like to reiterate here is that this is one surgery which I would always, always avoid doing because uh, the the aim of management of any microbial keratitis or some some similar situation where the cornea is melting and things like that would be to medically manage it as far as possible try and avoid a therapeutic keratoplasty because the prognosis could be uh, anything and everything you just do not know what you will land up with uh, after six months or a year so the aim would be first to medically manage any whatever the pathological condition is there in case you cannot and there are certain um, situations wherein the, the, the therapeutic PK is not avoid avoidable, I guess you'll have to go ahead and still do it. So basically the aims would be to debulk the load of infection in case of microbial keratitis and also to maintain the globe integrity, we have to do the uh, therapeutic PK. The indications would be an involvement of the limbus of the sclera, non-healing corneal ulcers, uh, deep stromal lesions which do not, uh, which keep on lingering and do not respond to any kind of uh, treatment and of course perforations 2 millimeter or larger which possibly would not be, uh, able, will be able to seal with us sinoacrylate glue. Again, uh, going by a little bit of the history, again, like I said, the uh, the, uh, the the primary pathology for which you are doing the therapeutic keratoplasty is extremely important. Sometimes you might just land up with a patient whose whole cornea is melted and you have no clue what has happened in the past. So in that situation, you need to really go back and dig deep and try to find out what was the chain of events before, what was the what could have been the the primary etiology as to what has led to the corneal melt and things like that. Systemic association is extremely important. Diabetes, like I said, in fungal infection it can cause havoc and no matter what you do with whatever what drug you use you just don't seem to respond so you have to do a therapeutic keratoplasty and post-operatively also the patients may not do really well if unless the diabetes is well controlled hypertension extremely important especially intraoperatively as it can again uh, can lead to a number of complications I'll, I'll come to that later on detailed clinical evaluation again usually the the visual equity would be quite poor in all this kind of patients so look for projection of rays definitely and also look for uh, perception of light. If there is no perception of light, then you need to really discuss that with the patient as to really what is the purpose of doing the keratoplasty, nothing really. Pupillary evaluation, again, try to look for the relative afferent pupillary defect in the other eye and give you some uh, idea of the posterior segment and the optic nerve. Ocular movement, that's um, if, the, if, the, if the infection is such that it's gone into the sclera and it's ca causing something like a pan of uh, that, can, that can cause a restriction of the ocular movement, so then you need to possibly uh, go for EVs or some such thing, so then the, that also needs to be uh, uh, clearly understood before you do the keratoplasty. And the slit lamp, uh, check about the leads, lead infection, lag of thalamus. Sometimes if, the lead, if there is a lag of thalamus and that is the primary cause of a, you know, of a corneal uh, problem, then you need to definitely, definitely do a tarsography when you do the therapeutic keratoplasty. Being reflex and other things also need to be evaluated. <coughs> The, uh, the, uh, the coming to the pathology per se, you need to see the, uh, the just the routine evaluation for any microbial keratitis about the depth of the lesion, the extent of the lesion, because all, all those things need to be evaluated because the whole lesion has to go when you're doing the keratoblast. If you leave behind the uh, infected tissue and things like that, then the whole purpose of doing the whole surgery is entirely lost. The amount of, uh, the depth of thinning, the degree of thinning, uh, how is the surrounding cornea, etc. Anterior chamber, again, a shallow anterior chamber could indicate a uh, leak or a or maybe an impending desmetocele and things like that, the hypopion, etc. of the anterior chamber also needs to be evaluated. Then the length status, whether it is an aphakic or a phakic, in cases of aphakes and fake, if pseudo fakes, what is there could be a chance of an endophthalmitis going on after the uh, therapeutic keratoplasty. Posterior segment of most of the times you are not able to see anything of the fundus, so you need to do a B scan uh, sonography and try to find out how the um, status is. Uh, please rule out a nosolacrimal duct, duct, or duct of, or obstruction we keep on doing peak therapeutic PK after PK and uh, the, uh, the primary pathology might be lying in the sac itself and uh, then the systemic status, they look for the random blood sugar, diabetes needs to be controlled. We also look for the BP and uh, remain other relevant uh, systemic stuff. 
Now, microbiology again extremely important uh, in preoperatively. If you have etiological diagnosis, the life becomes very very easy postoperatively to manage the patient after the therapeutic keratoplasty. Please do a basic microbiology workup, which would include a gram and a K staining and the basic uh, solid and the liquid media for the culture. Start surgical planning now again LA versus GA just now like what Dr. Fogla was discussing that GA is possibly something which can really really make the surgeon's life easier like the, the patient might be fasting for 6 hours and have a tube through his throat and things like that but remember the outcome as what you will be able to deliver with a GA in such kind of a compromised uh, situation is much much higher than the local anesthesia because in case of pre-existing perforation where patients have high, also situations patient is hypertensive or there is glaucoma there is nothing like a good GA uh, uh, that can make your life really easier and the, uh, make the surgery much, much safer. And uh, in case still going to do, do under LA, please don't leave the uh, block part on the anesthetic head. Please check it yourself. Make sure you inject adequate amount of long-acting uh, anesthetics and make proper echinacea and anesthesia because surgery is going to last for quite some time. Preoperative manitol infusion absolutely mandatory for all cases of therapeutic keratoplasty. And then last but not the least, a speculum. The speculum, like most of the time, the sister would, if it hands, she she might hand you a phaco speculum. Please make sure that it's not uh, tight and spacing on the globe because that can again uh, make your life really difficult. <coughs> First, I would like to uh, do is um, uh, compulsorily usually put a flaringa ring, then make anti-chamber parasynthesis and in wash off all the exudates and uh, uh, inject a viscoelastic and form the AC properly. Then after proper measurements, uh, I do the trephination. The trephination is to make sure that the whole large uh, ulcer which is close to the limbus, you might also have to do a conjunctival peritomy because otherwise the sutures would go into the conjunctiva and that make, again makes life difficult. If it is a small perforation, uh, you can seal it off with the cyanoacrylate glue so that your trephination becomes much easier. All, uh, all, and then uh, you, you, after trephination, you cut the uh, globe like a normal uh, PK, which is illustrated by Ashish, that you, you need good uh, um, corneal scissors, the right and left, or could use the universal, and uh, try to get a good rim, and please uh, try to see that all the infected area is excised, and you don't leave behind anything for the uh, microbes to uh, get back. Uh, the anterior chamber, again, needs to be cleaned properly, all the hypopion, exudates, fibrin, whatever you can, you can do a good cleaning, also form the AC uh, from the angle properly inject proper viscoelastic and form the angle because this is their only chance of you know manipulating into the anterior chamber and there could be uh, uh, bleeding as you try to peel off the membranes and things like that but you can put on keep on putting uh, viscoelastic and uh, try to reduce that make sure you make at least two peripheral iridectomies which I always do uh, so the pupillary block and other thing inflammation because a lot of inflammation post operatively and that can cause a pupillary block glaucoma Oversize the graft, I usually stick to a 0.5 millimeter oversized graft and uh, the minimum of 16 sutures need to be done and if it is, if, you are, if your graft size is something more than uh, 9 millimeters, preferable to do a 24 millimeter graft and uh, <coughs> suture tension should not be tight because we end up doing tight sutures considering the up thrust and the tension that we are, the surgeon himself is in. So please make sure they don't do over tight uh, sutures because that will give a very irregular uh, graft in the post operative feed-in. Another thing which I, because we end up doing tight sutures considering the up thrust and the tension that we are, the surgeon himself is in, so it's in. So please make sure they don't do over tight uh, sutures because that will give a very irregular uh, graft in the post operative feed -in. And another thing which I again try to reiterate here is that the, the centration of the graft is important definitely, but then if your lesion, if your lesion is uh, something which is eccentric, which is going to other limbus, then you have to take an eccentric graft. What is primarily important is that you remove the infection rather than a uh, central graft and all infection in the in the host bed now the sudden intraoperative problems again Vikas has also covered very uh, beautifully that uh, the, that uh, part here those certain things which are important here in therapeutic keratoplasty is that like I said if there is a pre-existing perforation put please put cyanoacrylate glue that will help your trephination much easier you can injure the lens or the iris and things like that and many times while peeling the uh, peeling the fibrin off we can do a di we can crease, uh, cause a dialysis or sometimes a peel of the anterior capsule of the lens all those things can happen so you need to be very careful up thrust from the vitreous and uh, lens expansion again a uh, common problem here again GA has a very 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 good role 
and it can really give you a very good control intraoperatively. Expulsive hemorrhage, only one who has faced it knows how nightmarish it can be. Here again, uh, if you want to avoid such situations, again, uh, GA is the word. Post operative care, well, if you have done a good therapeutic PK, if you're thinking the job is done, well, this is just the beginning of the story, and there are so many things to uh, really follow up and check on post operatively. Look for the graft status as you as you uh, would do for a normal uh, graft, but here again, you need to take care of the recurrences and make sure that uh, there are uh, no recurrences. Uh, the initial uh, two to three weeks are extremely critical, especially in fungal infections. And if you have a, have etiological diagnosis of what the microbial of what the uh, what the etiological agent this, then it, it helps you very well with the post-operative uh, antibiotic regimen. If you are doing a therapeutic PK for a, for a bacterial infection, usually we can start steroids along with antibiotics post-operatively, but if it is for a fungal infection, I would like to withhold uh, topical steroids for about uh, two weeks. Uh, glaucoma, again, is another uh, problem in the initial post-operative period till the anterior chamber exudates and inflammation is subsides. You may have uh, glaucoma and may have to give uh, systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors or topical anti-glaucoma drugs. <laughs> Try and manage all your microbial keratitis medically as much as possible. However, in unavoidable circumstances, if you really have to do it, please make sure you have a good idea of the history and uh, other clinical status. Microbiological uh, diagnosis of the etiological agent extremely important. So, need to follow up the patients uh, meticulously, postoperatively. Thank you.